Welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. I've got two guests from Fortinet with me next talking about a very interesting topic that's something that always piques my interest, cybersecurity and some of the things going on with respect to that. Sandra Wheatley joins us, the SVP of Marketing Threat Intelligence and Influencer Communications at Fortinet. Sandra, it's great to see you again. Thank you, Lisa. I'm delighted to be here today. Good, and Rob Rashad is here as well, Vice President, Global Training and Technical Field Enablement at Fortinet. Rob, welcome to the program. Hi, great to meet you, Lisa. Nice to be here. Likewise. So since I last saw Fortinet, we've had such a challenging year, as we all know, that's an understatement. But one of the things that happened so quickly was this distribution of the workforce. And there were already pre-existing gaps in um, IT visibility and teams being siloed, security teams being um, siloed as well, exacerbated existing cybersecurity skills gap. So Sandra, I want to start with you. Talk to us about what's going on with the cybersecurity skills gap and how it's impacting organizations today. Thank you, Lisa. Well, the cybersecurity skills gap continues to be one of the biggest challenges facing security organizations today. As you know, the uh, cybersecurity space is very dynamic. It's constantly changing. And we saw this even through COVID with uh, more people working from home or being educated from home. Um, uh, cyber adversaries are, are using um, remote workers as a way into the enterprise network. And so um, uh, security organizations today are facing a lot of complexity. Um, they deal with billions of alerts that come in every day. And a lot of these have to be managed manually and they just don't have the professionals to keep up with that. So it continues to be um, a big issue facing organizations. We have seen some progress about a year ago. Um, it was estimated that we would need 4 million uh, professionals come into the industry to close the gap. We're now at probably a little bit over 3 million. So there is progress being made, but we still have a, a long way to go. Yeah, good progress there. But what, I mean, one of the things that we saw so quickly was that with the distribution center was suddenly there were tons of trusted devices that were off the network perimeter or all these people going, use your own device at home until we can get you something provisioned on the network. So huge challenge that was almost like a light switch for right. people in any industry. Rob, talk to me from your perspective, the ongoing cybersecurity skills gap. What are some of the things that you're seeing through your lens? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it has certainly changed our focus over the last year with, with the pandemic and the, the changing workforce and so on. And I think as a as a, a cybersecurity vendor, you know, a lot of the times when we talk about training and the skills gap, we often tend to think pretty quickly about engineers and, and, and technical training. And what this has really opened up our eyes to is that we need to really broaden our scope when we're talking about training and closing the skills gap because it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot more than just engineers. So, you know, we, we've had to uh, really focus more on really anyone sitting in front of a computer screen and, and you know, uh, it, in, ensure that programs are available for people that are working from home that, that need to understand, um, you know, the, the, the fact that security is just as big an issue if you're working from home or working from the office. So it's really broadened our scope in terms of who we're delivering training to. Um, and, and within a number of our programs, actually, it's, it, that has happened. You know, when, when we're dealing with, we have a lot of academic partners that we deliver training with. And, and one thing that's happened there is we, we've traditionally dealt with engineering schools within our academic partners. But now we're starting to see a lot of business schools coming and talking to us about delivering training within MBA programs and so on, so that business leaders can start to understand, uh, you know, the, the need to be addressing cybersecurity in the boardroom, for example, not just within the IT department. So it's, I guess the one thing I would say is it's really broadened our scope in terms of who the audience is for cybersecurity and, and the skills gap is, uh, you know, it impacts a lot of different areas in the organization. Yeah, you brought up a great point there that that elevation of security to the board level is critical as we saw a big spike in things like ransomware last year. Ransomware getting much more sophisticated, kind of playing on people's concerns for buzzwords like COVID-19, for example. And I talked to a lot of organizations where security is at the board level, but the, the, the talent gap 
is another challenge. Sandra, talk to us about what Fortinet is doing from a partnership perspective to help shrink that gap. Well, it's interesting because if you were to do a survey of people about where the responsibility lies to train more professionals for the industry, you'll see a split. About 40% of people feel like academia uh, should be providing the training and the curriculum um, to bring more professionals into the industry. And then others feel like it's a mix it's a, between corporate, private, public partnerships. And, and that's something that Ford and F believes in. Um, we are uh, tackling this issue on multiple fronts. Uh, we recently launched our TAA initiative or our training um, advancement agenda. And um, a lot of the pro programs that Rob manages are part of that agenda, like our free tra NSE training, our security academies. But we're also working with a lot of global partners, corporate partners like Salesforce and IBM. We're also working with the World Economic Forum um, on this initiative because we really believe that it's going, it's a joint effort to really make a difference. And so, for example, with Salesforce, we provide uh, some of our curriculum and training for free on their training platform, the same with IBM. And we'll continue to scale these partnerships because with these partners, we can reach more people and uh, accelerate the impact that we can have overall. Absolutely, that, that ability to expand it, especially as we saw such a change in the cyber threat landscape last year. And as you said, Sandra, you've made great progress, Need, you know, a deficit of 4 million um, folks down to 3 million, but also looking at the opportunity to try to find more folks leveraging partners and to Rob's point, elevating the conversation or expanding that scope. This isn't just a problem for IT and security folks. This is a challenge across the organization that the board needs to be focused on because we've seen in this rapidly changing last year organizations in enough peril and trying to pivot their businesses. And then you add on you know, some of the cyber threats. Rob, can you talk a little bit more about the TAA initiative? I know that about your uh, network security expert program, NSC program, you guys also do 40 vets program. Talk to us a little bit about some of those programs and maybe some of the things that you've done to broaden the scope during the last year. Yeah, you certainly can. I mean, there's a number of programs that make up the, the agenda and you know, we've, we've widened the scope in terms of the audiences that we're looking at, but also as Sandra mentioned, trying to expand our reach. As Fortinet, obviously we have a reach into our partners and our ecosystem but you know, the ecosystem of the IBMs and the World Economic Forums and so on go far beyond our reach. Uh, but one of the things that we were able to do as a, as a company almost exactly a year ago, uh, you know, we made the conscious decision that um, the training curriculum that we've built, uh, we wanted to make it available to as many people as we possibly could. So we, uh, we've made uh, approximately 400 hours worth of cybersecurity training available to anyone that wants to sign up and, and, and take the training uh, in self-paced format, uh, you know, where they want to take it, when they want to take it. So that was a big commitment on our part. Uh, and that training continues to be free today uh, and, and we'll keep it free, in, you know, until we start to see the skills gap close. But, uh, you know, that, that has uh, resulted, um, I guess it was about a month or two ago when we were tracking numbers, we've, we've exceeded over a million uh, registrations for that training which really was validation to us that the demand for this training is, is massive. So, you know, that's, that's helped us expand our reach, but that training as well, we're making it available for free, but we have all uh, sorts of different types of partners who are taking that training and making it free, free through their learning portals as well. So it's really expanded the reach in that way. Uh, you know, another area that we've really focused on is uh, partnering with nonprofits who are, um, you know, representing uh, you know, underrepresented groups. So you mentioned the, veter the veterans program. That, that's been a program we've had for quite a while now. But, you know, we, we've looked at that program and thought, well, you know, we, we can definitely rep replicate our efforts there and look at other uh, groups as well and start to see how we can partner with different NGOs to, to really uh, address the diversity and inclusion and, uh, you know, within the cybersecurity uh, industry. Because, you know, I, I think one thing that's, that's um, interesting here is because of the skill shortage, a lot of hiring managers have had to start to look at recruiting through 
uh, you know, non-traditional uh, streams. And, you know, that uh, that can be, you know, looking at, you know, if we have policies that say, you know, we must hire people with four-year degrees. Well, maybe we want to take a look at that and see, well, is that really necessary for all the jobs that we're looking at? Maybe we could look at, uh, you know, uh, shorter programs, even high school students, uh, but then also looking at underrepresented groups. It is a great way for us to take a look at this skills gap in cybersecurity and align it with our diversity and inclusion initiatives, you know, internally within our organizations and see how we can bring that to bear on the problem uh, and, and really start to, at the same time, uh, create a, a, a much more diverse workforce within cybersecurity while we're trying to close that skills gap. I love that. What a great opportunity to expand upon that. I wanted to ask you just really quickly, Rob, you said 400 hours of free cyber training available, over a million registrations so far. You're right, that definitely shows the demand. I'm curious, when, when I think, we think of backgrounds, we think of are these, you know, need to be IT folks. Is that curriculum broad enough so that somebody with a marketing degree or somebody that doesn't have a degree could kind of get in on level one and start learning their way up the security stack? Yeah, it is a very broad uh, scope. When we when we look at the catalog, uh, you know, it is multiple levels. And in fact, the our network security expert program is it's an eight level program. And the first the first couple of levels of that program, uh, you know, are applicable to to anyone that needs an awareness of of cybersecurity and the issues. So yeah, it's perfect. And in fact, you know, the the level one of that program is something that we've integrated into a new service offering, which is our cybersecurity awareness program that companies can implement internally to provide that base level of cybersecurity awareness to all of their employees. Uh, and, and then as you go up to level two, three, four, and five, and so on, it gets more and more technical, right up to the, the uh, you know, NSC8 level where we're talking about uh, you know, architects, uh, engineers are developing very large, critical cybersecurity infrastructures. Lisa, you bring up a very important point that I'd like to make a comment on. Um, there's this misconception that you need a degree in computer science or some other technical degree to be in cybersecurity, and that's absolutely not the case. In fact, half the people in cybersecurity don't have a degree in any computer science uh, program, et cetera. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of skill sets and backgrounds that really map well to cybersecurity. And it's a very broad industry. There's new roles coming all of the time. So um, I would uh, encourage people to not let that be um, a barrier to getting into this industry. And in fact, our veterans program has been extremely successful because um, people coming out of the um, defense forces have a lot of the skills that map very well to cybersecurity, like attention to detail, um, situational awareness, the ability to work under pressure. So um, it's definitely a misconception that the industry needs to correct. I couldn't agree more, especially as a daughter of a Vietnam combat veteran and I love what you guys are doing with veterans, but you're right. There's so many other skills that people have that are so transportable and transferable that, and it and it's such an exciting industry. I mean, we all have a million devices scattered around. I think, you know, what's those new Apple tags? If I put one on my dog's collar, my dog's going to be a connected device. There's so many opportunities to learn, but there's also more exposure. The more people that have different backgrounds, I think just that with that thought diversity alone, um, organizations in any industry can benefit. Senator, talk to us about how partners are taking some of these programs and rolling them into their own to help kind of open that door wider, as you say, to, to you know make sure that barrier isn't there and also get more folks aware sure. of what they can learn. Yeah, I, I, the, the encouraging thing is I just see a lot more creativity around this issue. Um, if you think about it, the... Um, the lack of diversity um, in IT has been a challenge for everyone. The, the issue in cybersecurity is just a manifestation of that. And um, one of the reasons is that, and particularly in cybersecurity, a lot of people don't understand um, how to get into the industry or they have a lack of awareness um, about the different types of roles. And we see this in particular with uh, 
women and young females, as well as underserved uh, minority groups. In fact, the veterans program is one way to bring more of that diversity into the industry. And if you think about it today, uh, women make up about 24%. I think it's single digits for uh, underrepresented groups. So we have a huge opportunity there. And I think um, some of, working with our partners, we're doing a lot of different things. Not only are we providing our curriculum and our training and the technical support, um, but we're also um, create, we've uh, done a lot of work around mapping roles and the steps you need to take to, to achieve those roles. So um, we've created that for different roles and we've shared that with some of our training partners and they provide that information on um, their training platforms. We also regularly have done a lot of different podcasts and interviews with women and minorities who have gone through um, the industry and been very successful talking about how they did that and how they got there. We're working with lots of nonprofits like Women in Cybersecurity, speaking to people out there, providing them the support. So it's a multi-phase um, approach. And I do think that um, you know, private industry need to be doing things like creating um, entry level kinds of roles to bring more people into the industry and you know, recruit differently. But the, the good news is there's a huge amount of awareness around this and you definitely see companies doing a lot more as well as our partners. I think yeah, that's if I, fantastic. If I could just oh, touch go on, ahead, Rob. on something yes, there please. as well. What, you know, Sandra is talking about the, you know, the different career roles and so on. Uh, so you know, there's the, the, the industry can get pretty complicated pretty quickly when we're talking about different roles and there's a lot of buzzwords. And, and you know, when, when people are looking at this and say, well, how do I even get into this industry? It sounds very technical and, and complicated. And you know, there, there, is an, there are a number of different sort of career pathing tools that, that, that you can find out there around cybersecurity. Um, but when there's too many of those, that even gets confusing. So you know, the, the career path uh, paths that we've developed, we've done that in conjunction with NIST. And, and there's, a, there's an initiative called the, the, the NICE framework, which stands for National, National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. And so the path, the pathways that we've developed map to that. So, you know, that's one thing I'd like to encourage other organizations to make sure that, that you know, we're all following that framework so that as we're providing these career paths to people, we're using the same terminology, we're using the same titles and career paths and so on. So it just makes it a little bit more understandable for people to pick a path that they want and then start their, their journey. I also think uh, exposing students earlier um, uh, in their education about cybersecurity is really important. In fact, we just uh, released a book called CyberSafe, and it's targeting elementary school children and their parents and making them more aware of cybersecurity, um, the risks, how they should um, behave online. Um, it talks about cyberbullying and um, it also helps, has guidance in there for parents. And, and this is a book that we're making uh, freely available to um, underserved schools and it can easily be accessed um, online. Um, we've had great reviews, but it's all part of our TAA efforts to educate, uh, make people more aware about the opportunities and the industry overall. I love that. Sandra, our SVP of marketing, is there a, um, a, a URL that you can give our audience where they can find that free resource? Yes, um, you can find that, I believe, on our NSE um, training page. You can just go to fortinet.com, NSE, and or TAA, and you will find uh, uh, information about how to get the book. Excellent. So 40net.com, search TAA or NSE, you'll find that information. I'm going to check that out myself because maybe I'm, at, you know, for adult children of parents who also need some cybersecurity help, I think I might check that out for myself. You guys, this is a copy, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. It's been great talking to you guys. This is such an interesting topic. I love the efforts that 40net is doing to close those gaps and also what you're doing to bridge that with the diversity and inclusion efforts. Um, Rob, oh, that's a, a great effort. Sandra, Rob, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. For Sandra Wheatley and Rob Rashad, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation with Fortinet.